Hello and welcome my 64 leaves. Today we have a look at I remade Mario 64 from memory from Papra M46. It's like making a game from memory, a game that you usually know is like a hard task because you will remember things wrong. So let's have a look if I remember things differently here and what he does with it. Super Mario 64 is an iconic game, and for good oh, reason. It is. This game is filled with tons of recognizable areas. Peach's Castle, Bob on Battlefield, Womp's Fortress. It's no surprise that this game is a. Quite honestly, I'm not even sure or if I would remember every level. It's been like only a couple of years since I 100%ed this game. As a child, I was never able to beat the final Bowser nor get all the stars, but I have done that with the Switch release of it. I am pretty sure I would forget one or two levels, quite honestly. I mean, tell me in the comments if you remember all the levels, which you probably might Google and then say yes, but yo, that's how comments work, oh well. Establish yourself in the memories of thousands of players. As a modder of Mario 64, I've spent countless hours exploring these worlds, but just how well do I really know this game? A discon? The mascot for the Famicom disk system or N64 disk system or something? I've decided to test my knowledge of the game by recreating Mario 64 entirely from memory. Well, okay, I'm not going to remake the whole game from the ground up. That would take way more effort than I'm willing to devote to this video, and Nintendo would probably say- Yeah, I mean, true. You would, like, that would be a bit much, honestly. Now let's see where this goes send a group of assassins to my house if I ever tried to release it online. Instead, I'm going to make a mod of the original game, where I recreate the levels, textures, and character models from scratch, all while I'm never allowed to play or see the original game. So this is my starting point. As you can see, I've replaced Mario and all the HUD icons with these crude placeholder versions, and the castle grounds have been reduced to a flat plane. Now it's going to be my job to turn this back into Mario 64. I opened Blender and began modeling the basic shape of the ca- This is giving me... Flashbacks. I try to get into 3D modeling and... Uh, and it, I, I'm just not made for it. I have some streams where I did 3D modeling on the channel, so you might want to check those out if you're interested. I tried modeling stuff for the game I am making, but I'm so glad that I have such a great friend who is helping me with that game. Ah, <sighs> that helps me so much. He is a very great modeler. Castle Grounds. I started with the path that goes around the castle, and then I made the castle itself. I exported the level to the game, and yeah, I think the scale might be a bit off here. The castle is absolutely huge compared to Mario. Okay, but the scale being off is... A very easily fixed problem. The scale, yeah, okay. You you can see that. You will make that mistake, but it's not a mistake in the regards of do you remember it right? It's just more like the model, you do that in meters, centimeters, millimeters and stuff. And you have to get those dimensions. That doesn't mean you remember it wrong. You just have to figure out how the dimensions of the game actually are in comparison to Mario and stuff. After playing with the scale for a while, I finally got something that seemed pretty close to the original. My next step was modeling the bridge leading up to the entrance, as well as adding more of the grass around the castle. I also added some placeholder colors to make the level a bit nicer to look at before I add actual textures. This is already looking a lot better than before, and you can actually tell it's supposed to be the castle grounds now. I got to work on modeling most of the remaining features in the level, like the moat, the roof, and the pond. Now that most of the level geometry is finished, I can start working on adding texture. I have a feeling there are two more towers on the castle. Uh, like in the back. I'm not completely sure though. 
The first texture I made was the grass texture, and the process for this was pretty simple. I basically just scribbled random lines and various shades of green until I got something that resembled grass. Since the texture size in this game is so small, this actually worked pretty well, and I ended up with a decent looking grass texture. And you'll see that I continue using this technique for most of the textures I make in this video. After using a nearly identical process to create the path texture, I added them both to the level, and I think it looks pretty good. The next few okay. textures were- We have to be fair though. If the textures aren't one-to-one -one the same, that doesn't, like, of course that's okay. But if you just remember, that's a sandy texture, a grassy texture, the right colors and stuff. I think that's fair then. ...were a bit more involved, because they're more complicated than the grass texture. But I was still able to create the stone brick and cobblestone textures with relative ease. The texture for the grassy hills was interesting because it doesn't actually loop vertically, it's just mapped onto the geometry in a way that you'll never see the seam in the texture. I also finished textures for the bridge, the roof, and the moat. Wait, the bridge isn't wooden. The bridge is, I'm pretty sure, made out of stone. With all these textures finished, this level is- Oh! Oh, oh, that bridge. Yeah, okay, that little bridge on the side. Yeah, I was thinking about the main bridge. It's finally starting to come together, but our, uh, Mario is looking a bit out of place here, so it's time to make him a real model. I wouldn't say that, like... You could make a game like this where you start off as this blank, simple model, and then you gain power-ups that give you more details and stuff. That would be a great idea. You're getting, like, more into the world. I started with Mario's head, as it's the most important part of the model. This is easily the most complicated model I've worked on so far. Luckily, there's a few things that made this easier for me. First of all, Blender's mirror modifier made it so I only had to model one side of Mario's head, which made the process way simpler. Second of all, I've already worked with Mario's model several times in the past, so I had a pretty good idea of how the geometry is structured. In the end, I got a nice looking head model for Mario. Of course, it still needs textures, so I immediately got to work on making textures for Mario's eyes, mustache, sideburns, and cap emblem. After applying the textures to the mo I never realized that... Uh, well, it might not be on the original Mario model, but those sideburns look like hands that give a thumb a thumbs up which reminds me give me a thumbs up in this video as well you can find it in the description model it looks surprisingly good seriously i think this might actually huh. look better than the original model at least from the front the rest of mario's body was much easier to create considering it's basically just a bunch of segmented spheres of course i did have to make the texture for the buttons on mario's overalls and with that our Mario model is pretty much done. Testing it in-game, it looks good. It doesn't really look anything like the original model, but at least it looks like Mario. Now that we have our Mario, it's time to get some objects in the game, so I started working on a texture for the trees. The trees are a bit more detailed than any of the other textures I've done so far, so it ended up looking kind of terrible. Hey, I never claimed to be good at drawing. The wooden signpost was just more of the same with a basic model and texture. The model for the door was nothing complicated, but the texture does have a specific design that I had to try and replicate. I know it had these two panels with this sort of diagonal line pattern, eh, something like that. Now it's time to do something that I've been putting off for a while, the stained glass window texture. This texture is large and very detailed, so it went about- Okay, I wouldn't mind him to just make something stained glass. He knows that there's a stained glass window and that means he remembers it correct. So from that angle, I think that would work. About as well as you would expect. I was able to make an okay looking outline of Peach and these flowers that I'm pretty sure were in- I think she is facing the other side though. In the original texture. Then I added colors, but it ended up looking really flat and it felt like there was some important element I was missing but this is probably the best I'm gonna get. After this, I started adding the new objects I made to the level. I added the double doors at the entrance to the castle, and also made a new texture for the carpet in front of them. Then I added a bunch of trees around the grounds like in the original. 
Next, I set my sights on the moat, which is still empty. I added this new dirt texture because until now it's just been using the path texture. Then I started to work on the water texture. I knew this was going to be hard because I had to worry about varying levels of transparency along with the different shades of color. My scribbling technique still worked for this, it was just a lot more time consuming to get something I was happy with. A lot of my attempts just looked like complete garbage. I added a flat plane of water for the moat and the pond, and then I made the flowing waterfall. And I think it actually looks great in game. Now we can jump into the water and swim around, but when we do that we have to look at this horrible placeholder version of Mario's power meter. Yeah, I think it's about time I make proper replacements for these icons. The power meter is made up of two elements, the meter itself and the wooden border shaped like Mario's head. The meter has 8 different textures for the different levels of health Mario can have, so I had to make all of these. Then I got started on the wooden border. I drew a rough outline of Mario's head and made sure the meter was properly centered in the middle. Wait, wait, wait. Full is blue, isn't it? Then I added all the shading and polished up the texture to make it look like wood. With one HUD element finished and working in game, we can move on to the icons representing Mario's lives, stars, and coins. These icons were actually just compressed 3D renders in the original game, so I decided to make mine this way too to stay true to the original, and totally not just because I'm tired of drawing textures from scratch. Starting with the Mario head icon, I knew that the original texture was a render of one of those high poly Mario models they use for promo material. But considering this texture is only 16x16 16 16 pixels large, I figured I could get away with just using the low poly Mario I already made, since it'll be so pixelated anyway you probably won't be able to tell the difference. I isolated Mario's head and set up a camera in a similar angle to the original. After rendering the image, I downscaled it to the proper resolution. I did need to clean it up a bit, but after doing that, yeah I'd say it looks about as good as the original texture. As I thought, the low polygon count is pretty much unnoticeable at this resolution. Unfortunately, I didn't have any existing models to use for the star and coin icons, so I quickly threw together some models in Blender. Again, the quality of these models doesn't really matter since they end up getting downscaled like the Mario icon. Did the coins in 64 have a star on them? I think they did. I do think they did. Now for the most tedious part of this entire project making these number icons. I won't bore you with the details of this, I basically just had to repeat the exact same process for all 10 digits. It ended up paying off though, because I think they actually turned out really good. Yeah, they do look really nice, and yeah, making numbers and letters from scratch is kinda a nightmare. Close to the originals. Now, there's one more important icon I have to do, and that's the Lakitu icon. Unfortunately, my memory is kind of fuzzy on what Lakitu actually looks like, so I kind of just had to wing it. And I ended up with this absolute abomination of a model. My only hope was that downscaling the render would remove enough detail to make it look somewhat passable. Uh, yeah, it still looks terrible. I had to do a lot- No, I think this looks okay. It looks fine. A lot of manual work to fix up the texture. Like, I realized he's actually supposed to have goggles instead of these big glasses I gave him. And I also gave him some actual eyes to make him not look completely soulless. Now that all of these icons are done, we can finally see what they look like in game. And you know what, I'm actually really happy with how these turned out. I can totally see them being from a beta build of the game or something. Of course, we're not done yet. You've probably noticed that the level is still just sitting in this grey void. It's time to add the skybox. The skybox textures are some of the largest textures in the whole game, at 248 by 248 pixels. In fact, they're so large that the game has to split them up into smaller textures just so that the N64 can even load them. Luckily, the game's code does this automatically, so I don't have to manually split up the texture. Although, I did actually have to do this for some of the earlier large textures, like the stained glass window. Anyway, I tried to replicate the elements of the original skybox, with an ocean at the bottom and puffy clouds in the sky. And while it's not super detailed, I do think it turned out pretty nice. It almost looks like a painting, which is also- It looks really nice, but I think that's way too detailed for the 64. But okay, okay. Also the vibe I got from the original skybox. With the skybox in place, the castle grounds are finally almost finished. The only thing I had left to do was go back and add in all the little details that I hadn't done yet. I modeled the doorway to the basement and the vanish cap entrance in the moat and also added the cannon hole next to the pond. Then I added some windows to the castle, as well as the fences along the edge of the moat. 
Finally, I made a model for these butterflies and placed them around the map. And with that, the castle grounds are finally finished. Now it's time to see just how accurate this recreation is by comparing it to the original game. This is going to be the first time I've seen how the original game looks since I started this project. And... Whoa. Okay, so I... Okay. That's pretty close. I mean, yeah, of course you would remember where exactly which tree is placed and how many. That is obvious. But hey, yeah, that's very close. Yeah, he, the, the Mario head is on the wrong side, but oh, I mean, he remembered the Mario head. Also, there is no coin counter, actually. Oh, that might be because of where we are, yeah. Immediately saw some major differences between the original and my version. I think the most obvious difference is that the textures in the original game are just a lot brighter than mine, while my textures are darker and more saturated overall. I guess it might have been a bad idea to draw all of my textures on a dark background, but I'm sure if I had used light mode then the comments would be full of people complaining that I blinded them or something. Also, it seems like I still didn't get the scale of the map quite right. My ha! Ha! I was right! She is facing the other direction! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! I wasn't right about the towers though. My version of the castle is much bigger than the original, so Mario feels pretty small in my level compared to the original castle grounds. But besides the scale, it seems like I actually got the general layout pretty close. Unfortunately, I did forget a lot of small details like the flags on top of the castle. As for the textures, most of mine turned out looking a lot worse, but I think at least some of them hold up to the originals. I mean, it's fair that they look worse, but he did remember most textures pretty accurately, and that's pretty good. Although, I definitely wouldn't say any of them are actually better. Out of all the textures I made, I definitely think the HUD icons turned out the best. I'm especially proud of how close the orange number icons look to the originals. I do think it's kind of funny how I ended up making both the Mario icon and the stained glass window facing the wrong direction. It just made sense to me because you usually face towards the right in Mario games. As for Mario himself, I really do think his face in my model actually looks a lot better than the original. Yeah, but we also have to keep in mind that the modeling tools we have today are on a much... The free available modeling tools we have today are on a much higher level of what game developers who paid a lot for those back in the day had available for themselves, so it's fair, you know? Although the rest of his body seems about the same, if not slightly worse, than the original model. Overall, I think this ended up being a solid start for remaking Mario 64. My memory held up pretty well for the starting area, but I'm interested to see what mistakes I might make once I try remaking some of the actual stages in the game, like Bob on Battlefield. If you're interested in seeing this project continue, then definitely leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel to see more. Actually, yeah. I'm in for this journey. There, a like and a subscribe. Which you also should do. Oh, and before you ask, there's no download for this game yet. I'd like to get some actual content in the game before I release it for people to play. But if people like this project, then I'll definitely continue making videos on it. But that's about all I've got for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. That was good. That was actually great. I like the idea in general. Like, the idea itself is already genius, honestly. And he did hit it quite good. So, yeah, what can I say? This was interesting, and if he continues this... Actually, why not have a look? Did he continue this? This is three weeks old. I think it might be a bit too soon. Yeah, it's his newest video. But hey, so good work. I'm looking forward for more. So yeah, as I said, leave a like and a subscribe on his channel or my channel. And well, watch this video maybe. Until next time, bye-bye.